Hey guys, Arcane Restorations, back with the 1996 GL 1500 Goldwing Special Edition Part 10. Whew. One more episode of saying that every time. <laughs> Today we are going to be getting the linked brake system working, that brake pedal right there. Uh, that controls one set of brakes on the front, the front left brake, and then it also controls the rear brake. Little spoiler alert. We don't actually rebuild the rear master cylinder in this video. We disassemble it fully to get to it, and we do perform a visual inspection of it, but thankfully, at this time, it's still in a good working order, so we don't have to mess with it. We just end up bleeding the front left brake and the rear brake, which are the two brakes in this linked system. Well, there ain't no time like the present, and currently we're burning daylight, so. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get at it. I do recommend putting your bike on the kickstand versus the center stand. In this, it'll just give you a little bit more room. There are those little heat shields that cover the exhaust and you do have to take those off to get to the rear master cylinder. There's also two Phillips that hold that bottom foot rest cover I wouldn't say it's a foot peg you know it's too big to be a foot peg maybe like a foot rest and anyways there's just two of them and you got to take them off to be able to get to those heat shields some of the bolts on them also let me know what type of music do y'all like uh, I've had a few different time-lapse music that I've put on and I was wondering which one do y'all like best do y'all like the rock style or do y'all like the the kind of slow beat hip hop style or which one do y'all prefer? I want these to be as enjoying to watch as they can be so just let me know which style of music y'all like. I had to use a pretty long extension to get to one bolt that was way way back there. I believe they're all 10 millimeter if my memory serves me correctly. But there's quite a few of them. And again, this is just a heat shield to protect the plastics and other pieces of the motorcycle from the exhaust that runs right through here. And some of these bolts do experience some expanding and contracting, so they may be pretty difficult to get off. You know, the heat cycles makes them expand, contract, and then not to mention that they're on the lower half of the motorcycle, so they experience more moisture than some of the other bolts. So it just makes for a recipe of being hard to get off. You might throw some anti-seas on yours whenever you do it. Might help. Now we got the bottom cover off with the Phillips. Now you can get to these Allen head. I believe it's a uh, seven millimeter, maybe eight millimeter right here. And if you didn't know before, you can tell now, a uh, bike lived in a desert. <laughs> don't know if you saw that sand that just fell out of there, but there's quite a bit of it. With the footrest removed, we can get to the heat shields right there. And there's the master cylinder. It's moving freely, but again, we don't have any pressure. So at this point, I decided to try to bleed it. To bleed these brakes, you gotta take off that plastic piece up top right there. And then there will be three 10 millimeter bolts on this two at the bottom, one at the top. As this is a linked system, the proper bleeding procedure is to do the front left brake first and then do the rear brake. So again, right here, I'm just taking off all the three bolts that hold this plastic chrome piece on and that'll give you access to the caliper. Again, we're just gonna start with the front left brake and this bleeding process. I highly recommend either speed bleeders or having two people to do this. You know, normally whenever I do it by myself, I either use like a gallon of washer fluid or like a battery or something to hold down the brake pedals. 
Doing the top breaks easy because you can just use a zip tie. You know, you press it up, keep pressing the lever, and then you zip tie pressed and then released it. Many ways to do the handlebar one, but this one, you know, you just got to have some pressure on the brake letter, lever constant. I have also used the vacuum ones, and they're good, but I'm just not very versed in them. I just like the traditional old school method best. Pumping it up, holding it, and then opening it, closing it, and then repumping it up again. Another thing to remember, brake fluid is very, very caustic. It will damage paint components very quickly. So, just something to remember, don't get it on any paint. I tried to use the magnet to get it to stick, but I don't guess the magnet was strong enough. So now I'm just setting this bottle on a box. I don't like to leave it hanging because you know once the bottle fills up it fills up with brake fluid gets heavy and you know the last thing I want is brake fluid everywhere <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and pump it up like I was talking to you about you gotta carefully select your partner here and by partner I mean the the thing that's gonna be holding down the brake lever <laughs> luckily I had a gallon of washer fluid handy and you have to use the blue washer fluid uh, splash brand to do this you know there's no other options you can't use someone else holding it you can't use a battery nothing you have to use the blue colored splash brand washer fluid to hold the brake lever down <laughs> again I'm kidding so now I cracked open the bleeder with the brake lever depressed, theoretically you should get fluid out of there, but in this case, as you can see, I did not. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try, I'm just gonna try to leave it open and then just continuously press the brake pedal, which whenever it's open, it should just keep forcing fluid out. And we double checked our fluid levels, make sure we did have full fluid. And we did. At this point, I am kind of worried that it's the rear master cylinder that's not building pressure. Just because we don't have any fluid coming out of our bleeding screw. But, I completely removed the bleeding screw. And it turns out, fluid was getting to the caliper. It's just the bleeding screw was completely stopped up. So I used some wire off of a wire brush and ran it through there and got all that gunk and grime out. And so now we're just reapplying some oil resistant Teflon tape. This yellow Teflon tape is resistant to oil, gas, more, more so than your traditional blue plumber's Teflon tape. And then we're just gonna reapply this bleed screw back into the caliper and see if it works. I know I just said I don't normally suspend the brake fluid catcher, but <laughs> I just did it temporarily to see if cleaning the bleed screw allowed fluid to pass. And it did. So we're gonna go ahead, we're going to replace this with a longer hose, and then we're gonna bleed this thing. Once I get this on, we're just going to fully bleed this till we get new fluid all the way throughout the lines, all the way to the caliper. I won't show all of that on camera, but I'm just going to do the front, front left brake using the brake pedal 
And again, like I was saying, I'm just going to bleed it till we get all new fluid. Plus, that'll help with the air bubbles. So, And as you can see here in a second, whenever I open the line, it does look nasty and stu stupid dark. Like the brake fluid got burnt. So it definitely needed a change. After that's done, I'm going to do the rear brake. Some of the earlier models did not have this little cutout in the saddlebag to access it. I believe it's a hole saw that people use to make this hole and then they'll put like tape over it. It's pretty common on the Goldwing forums to see people doing it themselves. But thankfully this one, since it was a 96 little later model, had this hole cut out in the saddlebag already. So I'm just going to get my bleeder onto that and I'll be able to reach it through that hole. So I'll just repeat the breeding plus process on this rear brake caliper. It is pretty difficult to get in there though and you don't have much room, just a heads up. But an open end wrench works fine. As you can see, got some dark brake fluid out there and then still getting some bubbles that we were able to bleed out. And we will finish bleeding it tomorrow. <laughs> but after you fully bleed that, then it's getting the heat shields on. I should have taken pictures before because this was actually one of the stupidest parts of this. <laughs> Trying to figure out how to wiggle those heat shields back up in there where they were. But it got done. We got them in there. They're easier to take out than put in, I'll tell you. <laughs> Right here I'm just using a little extension on a screwdriver to just hold them in and then I went back and tightened them with the ratchet. But now we're just to the final stretch, we're just assembling it. Again, thanks again for watching so far. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate all the comments I get. So we got all built back together we're gonna go ahead and see how the rear brake is functioning which this isn't that crazy of a test you know you need to go take it out for a test drive in an open space where you have some room because this doesn't have near the force that the moving vehicle does but just walking it back and forth we didn't have any pressure whatsoever before this so this is a good sign right here. Again, this is Octane Restorations. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, please consider giving it a like. Uh, maybe dropping a comment. This is the second to last video in this 1996 Goldwing series. And we're nearly done with it. So again, thanks for watching. This is Octane Restorations. You have a good rest of your day.